Ellie here from The Dark Imp, helping parents reclaim family time by playing board games together. When I speak to my friends who are parents, a lot of them tell me that they play cards regularly with their families on holiday, when they're out at the restaurant, um, and, and in other situations too, after dinner around the table. But it's interesting, when I start to ask about other card games, other than standard playing cards, most people don't really know of any. So I thought it might be useful to share three simple card games that you could buy that you, don't, that you play with special cards, not with standard playing cards. So, these are all brilliant family-friendly ones. Let's start with Cockroach Poker, which is also called Bug Bluff. It's not poker at all. It's much more of a bluffing game than anything to do with poker. Well, I suppose poker is bluffing to a large extent. So the pack has different cards in which have different um, bugs on, eight different bugs. You can see them all on the back of the cards. So that's a fly, I guess. Uh, a scorpion, a bat. And each of the cards are different. The artwork's really nice. But you can, you know, all the frogs are different, but they have, um, but they have the same sort of colours, so you can see it easily that it's part of the same set. And you start with a hand of cards, and you, what you're trying to do is you're trying to palm off cards onto other players. So the game ends uh, with somebody losing rather than somebody winning. So you lose if you end up with a set of four cards all of the same type, same creature, in front of you on the table. So if I end up with these four, I suppose they're toads rather than frogs, these four toads on the table in front of me, that's it, I've lost the game. Or if I am unable to take my turn, because every turn you pass a card to somebody, that's what you do on your turn. If I'm unable to pass a card, I lose. So what do you do then? Well, on your turn, you select a card from your hand, secretly. Nobody can see what you've got. And you're going to pass it. So let's say, I don't know, I can't remember how many cards you have in hand. Um, let's say I'm going to take this card and I'm going to slide it down in front of any other player I choose and say, it's a cockroach. And then that player has to decide. Now they have a choice. They can either accept the card that means they're going to take it and, and, and then they have to declare if they think it's true or false that this card is a cockroach. So I might pass this to my mum and she might say, true, it's a cockroach. It's not, it's a bat. Now in this situation, she takes the bat and she has that in front of her. If it was a cockroach, I would take it and have it in front of me. Or she could say false, in which case she thinks I'm lying, and then I would end up with this in front of me and she wouldn't. So she's trying to work out if I'm telling the truth or if I'm lying. Or I could indeed pass what I've said I'm going to pass. Um, uh, but then the, the, the person you're passing to also has another choice. Instead of accepting the card, they could say, I'm going to pass it to someone else. So let's say... No, I say, okay, this is a cockroach. And I pass it to my mum and she says, no, I'm passing it on. So she doesn't want to accept it. Then she can have a little peek. And then she can pass it to another player. And then she chooses what she says. She can say, this is a cockroach. Or she can say something else. This is a rat. And then the next player can choose whether to accept the card or to pass it on again. Of course, there's a limited number of times you can pass it on because there'll be at some point everybody will know what the card is because everybody's looked at it. So someone is going to have to say, yeah, OK, I think this is a rat if that's what's been passed. So if I pass it on, I say I think this is a cockroach and my mum looks at it and goes, this is a rat. Then the next person has to decide if my mum is telling the truth or not. And it is a rat. That is how you play cockroach poker. Light game, lots of fun, can cause quite a lot of laughter. This is Dobble. Dobble is a speed game. 
And in fact, there's lots of different versions of it. Well, four or five different mini games that are all mentioned in the rule book. Um, and so in the rule book suggests that you play through the mini games. You could do five different games and uh, then work out how many, you know, who's won the most of the games. Uh, we tend to play the same one over and over or sometimes spice it up a bit. Uh, it's a very quick game. You can fill in 10 minutes by playing one mini game, five, 10 minutes, or you can choose to play a series of mini games which will last about half an hour. Double is a speed game and it's about awareness and recognition of symbols, really. The cards are great, especially for mathematicians. Uh, each card has, now let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight symbols on. So here's an example of a double card. And on each card, each, each pairing, no matter which two cards you pick in the pack, each card will have one symbol. Each pair will have one symbol that's the same. So what is it on this card, on these cards? I haven't looked yet. It's the moon. So you have to be able to quickly look at the cards and find the one symbol that matches. That's what all the mini games are based on that. So for example, these two. What is it? It's the lightning bolt. You see, there's a lightning bolt on both cards. None of the other symbols are the same. And it's the same with every single pair of cards. There are two that are the same. It's the bonfire. Right, so you, there are different ways you can play. You can play that you're trying to get the most cards. You can play that you're trying to lose cards the quickest. So, for example, you could have a central pile and um, everybody has got, uh, everybody's got... You can, for example, what you can do, I mean, I can't even remember if this is one of the versions. It's so easy to make up different variations of this game. You can start with a central pile and turn over a card and then turn over another card. And the person that spots the symbol first gets the first card. And then that one turns over. And then the person that spots the symbol next time gets that card. That's one way to play. You can start with your own piles and a central card that gets flipped over and you can uh, try and be the first person to work out what the symbol on the central card is that matches your own card and then you take that card. Or you can try and um, pick other people's cards. So you each turn up a card and you can try and find a matching symbol on someone else's card. So there are lots of different variations. They're all quick, they're all fun. It's a speed game. Be warned, the kids are good at this game. You have to be on your toes to even be able to compete. Double. And finally, Coloretto. Just a quick word of warning. Um, if you try and buy this from Amazon, you might end up with it in a different language. Now that doesn't necessarily matter other than the rule book. You can usually, for almost every game that's published, you can get the rule book online anyway. If you just search up Coloretto rule book PDF on, on Google, you'll probably come up with it. Um, but it is a bit frustrating if you've paid for the game and it comes in a different language. In fact, on Amazon, I think this is so much more expensive in English than it is in Italian at the moment. I don't know why. Tomorrow it might be different. Um, I got my got my game at a convention, so uh, because it was, I was trying to find it online and it was too expensive. Um, here we are. Right. So, in Coloretto, you have different uh, row markers. It the they all look like this. They have three cards on them to to. Um, to remind you that you could put three cards next to any row marker. So there'll be several of these, I think four of these different row markers on the table. And then on your turn, you're going to um, either pick up a card from the deck and place it into a row, or you're going to take a whole row. And it doesn't matter if it's a row that's full or not. You can take a row that is not full. And three is the maximum for a row. So in the deck, we have different colored cards. 
they've each got these chameleons on but really you're looking at the colors green orange blue that is very simple there's no more information on the card than that purple so there's these different suits and all the cards are in one suit or other and so you're taking a card from the top of the deck oh i've got this all mixed up here we are here we go you're taking a card from the top of the deck you're looking at it and you're deciding which of the rows to place it in and then at some point you're going to decide to take all the cards in one of the rows and you put them into your your little pile of cards and then when all of the rows have or when everybody's taken a row you replenish the card you start again you keep going and and as you go through the rounds you're going to develop a hand of cards and then at the end of the game this is quick at the end of the game you're going to count up how many you have in different suits now only three suits will count so if you have six blue cards you're going to get 21 points that's pretty good 21 points from that um, if you have let's say you've got three six six blue cards three green cards you'll get six points for that and uh, two yellows fine well you'll get three points for that but then let's say you have some, some cards in a different suit. Let's say you have another two browns and maybe two purples. Well, they're going to count negative three each. So what you're trying to do is only take cards from three sets, or at least minimise the cards you're taking from other sets. That's it. It's simple. It plays quickly. You can play it again and again. It's very satisfying. It's a very light strategy. And you, you can easily play rounds between dinner, it's really lovely, on holiday at the beach, in your self-catering apartment in the woods. That's Coloretto.